Rough area on the lateral surface gives attachment to pronator teres for pronation. It helps in picking up food from the plate. Lateral surface of upper one third, including part of posterior and anterior surfaces, gives insertion to important supinator muscle. It supinates the forearm and puts the food into the mouth. Anterior oblique line gives part of origin to flexor digitorum superficialis muscle. Concave anterior surface in upper three-fourth part gives origin to flexor pollicis longus and lower one-fourth gives insertion to pronator quadratus muscle. On the styloid process is the insertion of brachioradialis. This muscle arises from the lateral supracondylar ridge of the humerus. Both pronators, that is pronator teres and pronator quadratus, both supinators, that is biceps brachii and supinator and brachioradialis get inserted into the lateral bone of the forearm that is the radius. On the anterior surface at its lower end lies the important, important radial pulse before it disappears into anatomical snuff box. Posterior surface gives attachment to deep extensors of wrist joint. Lower end provides four compartments for passage of tendons and other structures. First compartment, first compartment shows tendons of abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis. Second compartment has two wrist extensors, extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis. Third compartment contains only one tendon, the extensor pollicis longus. Fourth compartment has four structures. First one is extensor digitorum. Next to it is extensor indices tendon, the posterior interosseous nerve and the anterior interosseous artery. The fifth compartment lies between radius and ulna and contains the tendon of extensor digiti minimi. The last compartment on the ulna is containing the tendon of extensor carpi ulna. The figure shows the radius laterally and the ulna medially. The interosseous membrane is attached to the medial border of radius and the lateral border of ulna. Interosseous membrane direction of fibers is downwards and medially. At right angles to the interosseous membrane, there is an oblique cord which goes from the radius to the ulna. This figure shows the transmission of weight from the wrist joint to the radius. From the radius, it comes to the ulna along the interosseous membrane and from the ulna, it goes to the humerus because ulna is taking more part in the formation of the elbow joint. This is a section of radius and ulna. The lateral surface of radius is big and the medial surface of ulna is big. Interosseous border is the medial border of radius and the lateral border of ulna, the anterior surface of both the bones and the posterior surface of both the bones. Anterior border of radius, posterior border of radius and anterior and posterior border of ulna. The lateral surface of the radius is lateral and the medial surface of course of the ulna is medial. Here the during act of pronation the radius 
turns over the alna. Alna remains almost fixed and the radius turns over and carries the hand with it and this is the movement of the pronation. The lower end of radius articulates with the proximal row of carpal bones. The scaphoid is lateral and the unit is medial and ulna articulates with the triquetral bone.